I'm Kirali Gould from Local Land Services, coordinating the Cold Country Koalas Habitat Enhancement Project. This population of koalas is sort of the, I guess, the snowy narrow population and not much is really known, which is why this research is really important. I think the first step is to bring the landholders along with us. To appreciate that you have quite a substantial population and a resilient population in this part of the world is really important for the overall conservation of koalas in New South Wales. Thank you all so much for coming. It's so great to see so many of you here this morning. This project is within the New Morella or the Monero Arcs area of regional koala significance. The properties that we're working on are based around the New Morella, Peak View, Durangle, Breadbow areas mainly. This project involves the planting of approximately 5,000 koala habitat and feed trees. We've also achieved eight kilometres of livestock exclusion fencing. We've done weed spraying and then we've also done some pest animal control and that's mainly been targeted around feral pigs. As part of this project, this area was impacted quite severely by bushfires in 2019-20. As part of this project, we were undertaking a koala karaoke audio monitoring survey um, to try and understand where the koalas were still surviving after the bushfire. Um, and we deploy them into the bush and we leave them out there for seven nights. They're a small box, they have a microphone in it and an SD card that records the recordings. The units that we were using have a radius of about 150 to 200 metres um, and that's depending on the topography, but that's sort of the, the zone that they're recording. Of our 100 odd units, we had a, a hit rate in the, the Monaro Numerella arcs of 63%, uh, which was amazingly high. Of the things that, that we can pull out of this information is that koalas were detected in all of the areas. All of the areas had been affected by fire. Um, we picked up koalas, so that was great. They're still in the area. And the other was that while we had the 63% success rate in the recordings, um, 50, over 50% 50 of, 50 of those were on private property. It kind of demonstrated how important in this part of the world landholders are in securing um, the conservation of koalas in the area. My name's Steve. I work with Tate Animals um, and as you've probably gathered, um, we work with detection dogs. And so this is Dash here. She's a two-year-old uh, working English Springer Spaniel. Detection dogs are a really, really great tool um, in what is often a multi-pronged um, approach in locating and managing and assessing uh, species like koalas. Like nine months, or however long they kept their collar on. I had it, one of my koalas cross the um, Numerella River and it went onto a property just down the road here and it was an elderly couple and I knocked on the door and I said, look, I've got a koala just about 50 metres up there you mind if I check it, explain who I was? And they said, who told you there was a koala here? And I was like, my GPS, I'm really sure. Um, and they were really, really excited, you know, came out with me to see it. And they said, we've been here however long, we've never seen one. And, you know, I think it's just touching on that notion of educating people that there are koalas and that they're worth protecting and they are on your back doorstep. We've got 120 acres. It's on the Badger River, um, just a few kilometres out of the village of Numerella. There's a lot of talk about koalas, they're such a um, popular animal. For them to be now on the endangered list, I think, has really opened a lot of people's eyes up to what, what we need to do for them. And I think the overwhelming reason that they are having these problems is because there's not enough habitat for them. So I think this is incredibly important to start um, revegetating these areas that would have once had vegetation on them with koala trees and expanding their habitat. So what we're doing here today is we're planting, so we've got uh, approximately 600 koala habitat uh, and feed trees going in here today. All right, so the first thing about planting, especially if you're doing it en masse. I really do think it's about the people on the ground. The government providing the funds will help, so we'll be able to do various things to um, encourage these landholders in and for them not to be feel intimidated 
we've got to really move past that because actually there's incentives, there's money coming out towards the restoration of the habitat. So it might mean that that landholder will be benefiting from having koalas on their property. It's been really exciting to work with our landholders on this coal country koala habitat project. We've had lots of expressions of interest. We've had lots of landholders who are really keen to set aside areas to help the koalas. And whether that is through planting or just from excluding livestock to protect that habitat and that natural regeneration. In the past I've been working with pests, rabbits in particular, so working with koalas is so much nicer than working with rabbits. <laughs> and I've really enjoyed reaching out to the community and, and having the community be so involved and so enthusiastic about the work that we've been doing, it's just been fantastic.